planet is running out of time. We are facing deep trouble going ahead if we don't change the way we live and the way we um, build our and grow our economy. Yeah. So I want to ask you, because we have a, a lot of investors and startups and entrepreneurs in our audience um, in front of um, EcoSummit TV, I want to ask you, how do the people investing into green buildings, your clients, how are they actually appreciating and valuing the fact that um, smart green design can um, not only uh, reduce um, the operation cost of a building, which is very high compared to the construction cost, but it, it's also not more expensive anymore to construct a smart green building. So how long does it look, not from the uh, creative point of view, but from the business point of view, according to your experience? Yeah, well, I think on the cradle-to-cradle -cradle front, um, we built the, the Environmental Defense Fund office in 1984. Mm -hmm. Um, which is an interior on Park Avenue for $34 a square foot. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that's $340 a square meter. I mean, this is not very not much it. money. Yeah, and so we were very conscious it was a not-for-profit group. So we really, you know, we're very careful, and we always put economy in our in our issues mm -hmm. list, and we honor that. Mm -hmm. So, and then if you jump forward to um, uh, the fabric that Michael and I did, our first chemical design collaboration, mm -hmm. uh, which is in this exhibit, uh, was done for Rohner and Steelcase. Mm -hmm. Steelcase had come to me and said, would you design a fabric collection mm -hmm. visual? And I said, I'd do it if we could design what it is, mm -hmm. too. So Michael and his chemist came in, worked with the mill in Switzerland. Now that product is safe enough to eat. The water coming out of the factory is clean enough to drink, and et cetera. And it, um, that, product was 20% more cost effective. That's amazing. How do you keep a business like textiles in Switzerland, mm. right? We have to reduce the cost. Mm. Otherwise you're going to China. So you really need to work these things out. Mm. So there was that. And we eliminate regulation, that costs money, but very businesslike, mm. right? So um, it's good. So 20% reduction on some of our other projects where uh, we've covered buildings with habitats and things that you might think are an added cost. We have reduced the energy bills in buildings by 70%. Mm, wow. right? That's, That's a lot, amazing, yeah. you know? And, and we've also increased productivity. We have one building, an office building, where I was told by the chairman that the building is 16% more productive. Mm -hmm. And if the average worker earns $100,000, that means you're getting $1,000 uh, per person per year. If it's 1%, mm -hmm. well, what if it's $16,000 per year per person? Start to realize they're only in 200 square feet. The so even the productivity gains because of the people in the building are more productive, more happy, and they are really are the a, a very big economic factor. Yeah. Those are the biggest numbers on the yeah. spreadsheet of a CEO. Yeah. They're not sitting there going, what is my energy bill? Mm. They're going in saying, how many people I have? What do they cost? Mm. Right? That's their big number on the spreadsheet. We're just, energy is like 2%, it's nothing. But people, 30, 40, 50%. So the people are why we're here. We're here to help them be healthy, productive. So we see that kind of thing. And that means buildings are paying for themselves in a number of years, totally. Usually that works for people who have their own buildings. It's very hard for the speculative real estate builders to, to be able to use that as an argument when people are studying one building against another because you're not quite sure. Uh, you're not doing it for your own people. And so you can't amortize these special things like air quality and daylight because you're not. So basically a company, a company that wants a new building because they want to build a, a factory inside mm -hmm. the building or an office building, they really want to live in it and work in it. They are your favorite customers because they are really sensitive They're to the, the numbers. Customers. Yeah. yeah, and when we did the Ford Rouge, the biggest um, yeah. uh, industrial facility uh, in the U.S. during Henry Ford's expansion, um, that facility was looked at from a just a very simple uh, perspective of if to meet the law for clean water, that they were ready to spend forty-eight million dollars. That was the law, mm -hmm. and had been engineered with conventional engineering using chemical treatment plants and pipes. And we said, what if we could do it with um, nature? 
And so our system was $13 million. Theirs was $48 million. Mm -hmm. So Ford saved $35 million mm -hmm. of CapEx for the finance people day one. Mm -hmm. And when I explained it to their board oh, to get authorization, we said this project is for the birds. Mm -hmm. That is true. I but remember that number because I saw your TED talk yesterday yeah. as a preparation for our interview. <laughs> yeah, but if you think, $35 million is the equivalent of selling almost a billion dollars worth of cars. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It's really good. Shall we bring uh, Michael Braungart in for a little moment? Do you just want to join us on my on my left? Mm -hmm. Hi. Hey. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm fine. So now we are in a special situation and I'm even more honored because uh, I not only have one of the uh, co-founders of um, Cradle to Cradle and co-authors, uh, they wrote a wonderful book together, but also um, the second uh, man himself, Michael Braungart. May I call you Michael? Yes, yeah, sure. Because we are in English, I think, American way. Yeah. So first of all, thank you very much for um, inventing and sharing the Cradle to Cradle philo philosophy with uh, not only us, but the rest of the world. I think you really make a big contribution and we want to help you uh, spreading the message. And um, we, um, Bill already explained how the two of you met, so we don't need to repeat that uh, part of the interview. Maybe you have a different story. Ah, okay. So, okay, exactly. So, please uh, tell us your experience of the first meeting. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, so I was opening an office in, in uh, New York, a very nice rooftop ga uh, garden thing where you c and it was nice weather and Bill came half an hour earlier because he wanted to talk about architecture and it was just so amazing so everybody I was there and everybody uh, came by the German embassy BSF and all the big chemical companies and I didn't have time for them because it was so exciting talking to Bill mm -hmm. and he left five hours later after the whole opening thing and I basically missed it yeah mm -hmm. I was the host and I said hello nice that you're here yeah, but I've really didn't. It was so exciting talking to Bill, and since then it's now 20 years ago. We are close friends. He's my best friend, and it's still a source of inspiration to talk to him. And he is definitely the best living chemist I know yeah, in that because in that field, because <laughs> chemistry is asking about the right questions, okay. knowing to know things, uh, and as well uh, to to be friendly. Yeah because if you don't like people, you can only be less bad. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the first thing, and that's mm -hmm. why I really appreciate working with him. Yeah. Wonderful. That's really good to have a big uh, friendship, and I'm just uh, standing in the middle of it. Now I want to ask you, um, what is your, your favorite project that you did together? What is the, um, the project where you reached a new dimension, where you really went um, to, the, um, to the source, to the foundation, where you enjoyed the cooperation betwe between the two of you the most. Can you remember it, which one it was? <laughs> it's easy for me. I mean, I, if I go back in the list of things we've done together, we can go straight back to Switzerland on the first project mm -hmm. where Michael took on the science of this fabric. Mm -hmm. And when it came out at the end, I mean, we started with our values, mm -hmm. which are how to love children, how to clean water, how to do this. And then we measured it at the end. We didn't start out by saying we're going to clean the water and we're going to do this. We didn't know what was going to happen. At least I didn't. And and it happened. And at the end of it, I mean, think about it. A textile, clean enough to eat, water coming out of a textile mill. I mean, we're talking about dye vats that are hot and full of dark, ugly stuff. And, you know, and it comes out, you can drink it. Isn't that fantastic? Mm -hmm. So if the first Industrial Revolution started with textiles, how about the next one? Mm -hmm. That was awesome moment. And for you, Michael, the coolest project where you really uh, saw a new dimension, which one was it? Together with Bill. <laughs> and basically, the Fort Rouge plant was one of the most exciting things, mm. because to, to start at a place where the real the first industrial revolution in the industry mass production was taking place, that's nice. Normally, United States, the companies go away and just close down the area and look for another space. Mm -hmm. Now, the company like Ford really going out and said, we want to have used this space there. We are native to this place and we clean it up and we make it really a, a place where children can play, 
that's really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, for me, it's really uh, the icon of mass production. That's why we talk about uh, the next industrial revolution. But we want to honor the pioneers as well. And without people like Bill Ford, you know, without these people, it would not happen. So for me, it's inspiring to see that we can motivate people to change and that they take their own strength and responsibility and to do so. And so the Ford company was interesting because it's well, it contains techniques from all different continents. It's a green roof technology comes from a company close to Bremen, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's nice. Yeah, so you can work together. We can take the uh, Western way to analyze problems. Yeah. In Europe, we get, get paid for problems, yeah, not for solving problems. In the United States, you get paid for solving problems, but sometimes the problem is another one because the definition is not good enough. In China, people think about cycles, but of, of the wrong things. Yeah. In, and in uh, certain countries, people understand the benefit of solar income. So it's about uh, celebrating abundance. So it brings all the different cultures together in that. And that's why it's so nice to, to honor all these pioneers. And coming back on Bill's point, definitely the first ones didn't know whether it would work, yeah? because it was the first thing yeah? mm. yeah, to make fabric yeah, for a small textile mill, which can go in biological systems where the pieces normally are so toxic to go into hazardous waste incineration. So I want to honor these pioneers first, because now everybody does cradle to cradle. Yeah, there are whole states in like uh, Limburg where become cradle to cradle states, yeah, whole countries like Taiwan becoming a cradle to cradle island. European Union puts 100 million euros into cradle to cradle projects. Now everybody wants to do it, but the pioneers 20 years ago didn't know the outcome. That's mm. why this was the most impressive today. It becomes mainstream because look, as soon as you understand that less bad is no good, <laughs> you don't want to continue to be less bad. Yeah? Mm. And that's fun. Yeah? And people understand, it's amazing. People want to be good for economy. They would want to be good for society, but they only want to be zero for the environment, zero footprint, carbon neutral. No tree is carbon neutral. A tree is carbon positive. And as soon as people understand it, they do it. So it's like a friendly tsunami. We have here students from, from 28 universities. Can you imagine 28 universities wow. around here? And over the weekend, it's, everything is crowded by students who just take the weekend, come to Berlin, talk about you know, their work yeah, today. It's just the revolution is going on. We will need this 10 years yeah, till 2020, basically. And you will see, like the internet, like mobile phones, we will change the industrial system because less bad is no good and people want to be good. We can use now 30 years of blaming and shaming for innovation. So it's no longer about green, it's about innovation because it's not a tiny little green niche. It's, it's quality, holistic quality, holistic beauty as well. Mm.